Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and today I want to talk about a subject that baffles a lot of people, and that's the difference between a straight alpha channel and a pre-multiplied alpha channel. Now, when working in Photoshop, you're going to generate alpha channels in order to key your graphics when they go into a video program, such as Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, Avid, etc. These all rely upon the alpha channel for embedded transparency that gets stored with the graphic when you save it as a PICT, TIFF, or PNG file. Now, there's lots of things we could do to really make this come through, but if you don't get the alpha channel right, it can cause problems. For example here, we have a football with a drop shadow that's already been extracted and is ready to create an alpha channel. If I look at the channels palette, there's already an alpha channel, but I'll go ahead and get rid of that so we could do this from scratch. If you go to your actions palette, you can go ahead and click the sub menu to load up the video actions that are built in. Within there, you will find a set that says alpha channel, and there are two of these here. The first one says alpha channel from visible layers, and the second one says inverted. If you're working with an avid editing system, use the inverted option. Otherwise, pick the regular one here and simply click the play button. Now it's going to tell you that it's going to make an alpha channel and says please make sure that you only have the layers turned on that you want, and then you click continue. When you do that, the new alpha channel is generated and this indicates the areas of transparency. White is opaque, black is transparent, partially gray is partially opaque. Now the problem here lies when you save this document. If we look at the Photoshop file, you see a transparency grid. But in the world of Photoshop, when you save the document, the transparency grid gets replaced with white when you save out as a PICT, TIFF, or Targa file. So if we go ahead and look at this here and we look at it saved, you'll see how it's substituted white back there. When you key this over a video source, your drop shadow will have white fringe to it and it'll look much lighter than you intended. That's because it's got white pre-multiplied in with it. Now, some programs can accommodate this. You can go ahead and fix this pretty easily when you import into After Effects, but other tools aren't so good. It's usually an option that the editor has to remember to change and go and manually find it, and that leads to errors. What you want it to look like is this. So if we take a look here, you'll see that the drop shadow is over black. If we turn on the alpha channel, you'll see that there is indeed an alpha channel there cutting the shadow, and the shadow will be filled with black, not white. Now getting here is pretty simple. All you need to do in your Photoshop document is put a color behind it that represents the color of the shadow. So we could say go ahead and make a solid color, fill it with this black, click OK, and put that layer behind. Now when you choose File Save As, and you pick a file format, such as PICT, TIFF, or TARGA, you can leave this with the Alpha Channels box checked. When you generate then, make sure you do 32 bits with no compression, and now the Alpha Channel is properly embedded in the saved copy. Making sure that your Alpha Channel is a straight Alpha Channel is a good idea. If you don't have something as simple as a drop shadow back there, then just put another copy of the photo back there. If you've masked this image out of a backdrop, simply put an extracted copy on top of a non-extracted copy once you have the alpha channel. That way your edges will be nice and clean when you export this. For Photoshop for Video, my name is Rich Harrington, and be sure to check out our resource blog at photoshopforvideo.com.